Sean, you might think being traded from the Cavaliers to the Timberwolves would upset Andrew Wiggins. After all, he can't play beside the best player in the world in LeBron James and goes from a title contender to a basement dweller. However, Kansas coach Bill Self recently recalled a conversation with his former player saying this. When all this trade stuff started, I talked to Andrew and Andrew told me, I hope I get traded. And I'm like, no, you don't. And he said, coach, I do. It's better for me knowing my personality and what I need to do to go somewhere where I'm forced to be something as opposed to going in, going in there where they're going to be patient with me and I'm going to be a piece. So Skip, based on those comments you heard from Bill Self, what does that tell you about Andrew Wiggins? told me that maybe he'll be a better NBA player than I think he'll be. I was impressed with that reaction to his former coach. Again, we're trusting Bill Self on this. We haven't heard that straight from Andrew, but I know Bill, like him, believe in him, trust him. Bill is mutual. Yes. In, in this case, we're going back several weeks to where the trade was just starting to be rumored, and Bill is saying that he told Andrew, no, no, you, you want to you stay with this LeBron guy over here in Cleveland. Nope, coach. I want to go make my own name in, in Minnesota. And Stephen A., I'm going to say it again, and I don't want to be too hard on the kid. I don't see NBA star in Andrew Wiggins, but I only got to see him one quote-unquote baby year at Kansas at age 18. And he was playing with a lot of very good young players, including Joel Embiid. But I saw wildly inconsistent. I saw 41 points at West Virginia. I saw 30 against Oklahoma State in the conference tournament. And against Oklahoma State at home, I saw three. And at Texas, I saw seven. And against Stanford in the NCAA game, big game, biggest game of his life to, to date, Andrew Wiggins scored four points on one of six field goals. Really? That's going to be the first pick in the draft? I'm sorry, I can't buy into that. But I can buy into a quote in which his former coach is saying, he wants to go show you that he can be the man in Minneapolis for the Timberwolves. I like that. Because clearly, he was just going to be another piece of the puzzle at best if he had stayed in Cleveland with LeBron. So in this case, bully for him. Great quote and great outlook. And I give him a little more of a chance because I like the intangible. Well, that's, what, that's the reason why he was picked number one overall. He's not trying to fit in. He's trying to yeah. be the man. And he's willing to accept the responsibility that comes along with it. And the reason why I applaud his quote through Bill Self, of course, assuming it's absolutely accurate, which yeah. we're going to do, is because it's another way of him opening up about how insulting this whole process has been towards him. Yep. He's the number one overall pick in the NBA draft. And LeBron James decides to come back to Cleveland, not that he in any way compares to LeBron because he does not, but LeBron James comes to Cleveland, and all we hear is that, well, he's not going to be in Cleveland, and Cleveland's not going to want you because they want Kevin Love, and in order to get Kevin Love, they're going to have to give you up. And so he hasn't had any opportunity whatsoever to enjoy being the number one overall pick and a potentially, and a potentially marquee player in the future because all he's been hearing is that you're not particularly wanted. And so he's saying, look, let them do what they're going to do. I'd rather go someplace where I'm wanted and people are going to willing to be willing to hand me the ball and say, all right, show us what you got, rather than I got to fit in and work things out. Think about this. If he stays in Cleveland, it's not just LeBron being there. It's LeBron returning to the city. It's Kyrie Irving and the $90 yeah. million dollar contract. It's Deion Waiters trying to prove that he's valuable and viable as well. It's all of this stuff going on. And you're the number one pick. You want to roll into town. I'm like, I am here. I'm ready to roll. Y'all ready to roll? That's not what's going on here. So he's saying, you know what, Cleveland, hurry up, get this over with. I'm interested in getting, out, getting the hell out of here. Why should I want to be a part of this? So is it possible that he still talks a bigger game than he'll be able to play in the NBA? I, I believe he has a suspect handle yeah. and a streaky jump shot. He does. But his athleticism is off the charts. It and is. here's where he impresses me. He plays on both ends. He defends. They rave about his willingness as well as his ability to defend. And when you are a guy that has star potential and considered to have a tremendous upside, and it's not all predicated on your offensive prowess, I think that goes a long, long way 
towards validating who you are and what you bring to the table. Does he have a good enough feel, even though he's still a baby in basketball terms? Does no. he have a good enough feel for playing in the game of basketball? No. Jabari, Jabari Parker does. No doubt. No doubt about it. And I still say Joel Embiid, if in fact his mm. back issues can be alleviated, will be much better than any of those players. No, I wouldn't say much better than Jabari Parker. I think so. Jabari Parker, to me, has an opportunity to be like Carmelo Anthony. Wow, that's a big, bold statement. It's interesting. Jabari Parker is going to be big time. I like Jabari. It's interesting that Andrew Wiggins sounds like he would almost rather leave where the stars are to build his own legacy when it, where LeBron left Cleveland to join stars to win a title. Somewhat reversed. Well, Andrew's young. Maybe he'll find out that in about five years he'll be looking to join forces with some stars. Maybe. Maybe. But he's not running from the no, challenge and the spotlight. Not. And, I love and that, that goes a long way. That reminds me years ago of when Allen Iverson was picked number one overall. There were a lot of people. I was covering high school sports, you know, a few years earlier than that. And, you know, in 1990, they got drafted in 1996. I was covering high school sports in 1993. Mm -hmm. I covered Stephon Marbury, who was a flat-out superstar on a college, on a prep level yep. before going one year to Georgia Tech. But he came out of college, same time as Allen Iverson and Pat Croce and those boys said, have you spoken to this kid? Have you seen this kid? We understand that Stephon Marbury is a big-time talent. Mm -hmm. But this dude right here named Allen Iverson, mm -hmm. wait till you see this boy. And he was talking about attitude, not I know. just skill. And I'll be the first attitude. to say, I didn't love the idea of taking an under-six-foot player with the number one pick in the draft. Let me tell you something. It worked. <laughs> they knew it. They knew it. And they got Allen Iverson there, and he was a showstopper. And I never, the first time I met Allen Iverson was at the Chicago pre-draft camp. Prior to being drafted, he was like, let's get it started, baby. That's all he said. He said, let's get it started, baby. And it's before he's drafted, we ready to roll. And that's exactly how he came in. We had that kind of attitude. Andrew Wiggins thinks mm -hmm. like that. We'll see. Coming up, we talk about another show.